So welcome to the first session of the Solidarity Semester hosted by Solidarity Is and the Building Movement Project. My name is Catherine Foley. I'm the Communications and Operation Associate at BMP and I'm helping to coordinate these sessions along with the rest of the Solidarity Semester team. So before we get into the tech logistics, I just wanted to share that I'm a caregiver within my social change ecosystem. So moving on to the tech, uh, first of all, this is a Zoom webinar, so your video and your microphone are turned off. We've also disabled the chat function and my colleagues will share ways that you can engage with us and each other later on. In the meantime, if you have any questions related to the content or any tech issues, you can use the Q&A box and one of us will respond to you. This session is also being recorded and we'll share all the materials and resources out at the end of the week. As a reminder, the topic for this week is mapping our roles in a social change ecosystem. And I'm about to drop the link into the chat. So you can refer to the link, or sorry, to the map and the guide throughout the session. And with that, I'm gonna hand things over to my colleague, Maron. Hey y'all. Um, yeah, so just gonna run through a couple of things. Um, so the chat is disabled. So just to let you all know, if you wanna engage in conversation with us, if you do have Twitter, that's the best way. So it's um, at solidarity is underscore solidarity underscore is. <laughs> and if you wanna hashtag solidarity semester and engage in conversation that way, connect with others. Um, my name is Marone, I'm a consultant with Solidarity is and in the social change ecosystem, I'm a storyteller. And I'll pass it off to Deepa. Thanks so much, Marone and Catherine. Hi, everyone. Welcome so much. Welcome to the Solidarity Semester. I'm so excited that you all are here. My name is Deepa Iyer, and I am the director of movement building as the Building Movement Project and also with Solidarity Is. And you met two of our team members for Solidarity Is and the Solidarity Semester, and you'll meet the rest over the course of um, this conversation. So you'll meet Anna and Deborah and Shelby as well. So um, moving on, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about Solidarity Is and the Building Movement Project. So uh, BMP is a national nonprofit and the mission of BMP is to strengthen organizations and individuals who are engaged in social change. One of our projects is Solidarity Is. And as you can see on this slide, um, we see Solidarity Is as a project that actually does three main roles. One is that it is a builder, um, so we support activists and organizations through resources and solidarity schools and the solidarity semester like this. Um, we also function as a storyteller where we try to uplift examples of multiracial solidarity through our podcast and social media. And we see ourselves as weavers. Um, we bring folks together um, in order to build relationships and analysis. So those are the three roles we play. And for the solidarity semester, as you'll see on the next slide, we are playing the role of a builder. So you all probably saw this um, graphic, which is why you are here with us today. But there are a few goals we wanted to uplift in terms of the solidarity semester. What we're hoping that you will take away over the course of the next month is a toolkit full of resources to help you engage in social change and ideas for action. We hope you'll be inspired by the content that we're providing and the people that you're going to be learning from. Um, and we hope that this is a pathway for you to engage in social change work. We're going to tell you a little bit later about a, an internship program that might be of interest to many of you. Moving on, you'll see that over the course of this month, we are holding class or classes in session two times a week. So Tuesdays and Thursdays between today and October 15th. Every Tuesday, we'll be here on Zoom at the link that you had when you registered. And this is a little bit of the content that we'll be covering throughout the month. And then on Thursday, we invite you to join us on Instagram Live at Building Movement Project, um, which is the Instagram account where we will be hosting really inspiring conversations, as you'll see on the next slide, with 
whom we call movement leaders. Um, this is our faculty of movement leaders who are going to be part of the solidarity semester. I'm not going to go into every single one of these folks' as bios, but you can see um, in terms of where they work and their affiliations that these are people who are really on the front lines of social movement uh, work in this country on a range of issues. And this Thursday, we're going to be welcoming Grisa Martinez, who's the executive director of United We Dream. So join us on Instagram Live and learn from her. So now we want to actually ask you a little bit about yourself. Um, as Catherine mentioned, we had a lot of folks sign up and we want to get to know a little bit more about you. So we're going to put up a couple of polls right now um, and ask you to respond to them. So the first poll is, where are you based? And then the second poll is, are you right now in school? Are you interning, um, et cetera? So we'll take a minute to complete this poll and ask you to do so. Okay, so maybe we can close the poll if Catherine you think it's the right time. All right. And so what we're seeing here is that we've got a lot of folks from um, on the East Coast. We've got folks in the Midwest um, and even folks outside of the United States. Um, welcome to all of you who are joining us. I'm not sure what your time zone is, but thank you for, for joining us. And then in terms of folks um, who are in college, it looks like most of you are in college uh, or many of you are actually working part-time or full-time. And some of you are in between, which is great. Um, we're really excited to have you here. And um, as we close out this poll, I just wanted to mention that, you know, we know that everyone is um, going through a lot right now, right? When it comes to the upheavals and disruptions in our country. So whether you're on the West Coast and you are dealing with the wildfires, whether you are um, dealing with a pandemic um, or the uprisings for um, systemic um, equity in this country, there's a lot happening. And we wanted to acknowledge that and that we all um, have a range of emotions and feelings around it. So however you are coming into the space, we welcome you and we are so glad that you're here and we hope that the Solidarity Semester will be a way for you to find some refuge and some direction and of course ideas for action and change. So um, why did we want to host the Solidarity Semester, right? Um, so we, when you look on the next um, slide, we'll see that we're actually, as I just mentioned, living through a lot of generational moments. Um, what are generational moments? And feel free to actually answer some of this too on, in the Q&A if you'd like. Um, but generational moments are moments that really affect large swaths of society. And these are the moments where you can really sense a before and an after. There's no going back to normal. There's no business as usual. And a lot of people go through a transformation process. And right now we are living through a series of generational moments, whether it's the uprisings, whether it's the political climate, whether it is the pandemic, right? Um, all of these are likely affecting you. For me, my generational moment actually happened in the wake of 9-11, where I recognized that I had a responsibility and I heard a call to action to work in my community, the South Asian American community. And so for all of us, generational moments can be transformative and oftentimes also draining and difficult too. So if we examine some of these generational moments, and I'd love to, we're gonna put up a poll um, in a little bit to hear about how you are responding to these generational moments. But the first one we wanted to talk about, as you'll see on the next slide, is the pandemic. And we wanted to take a moment to look at the effects of the pandemic, right? Um, again, a generational moment that folks are, are facing, and particularly with young people in terms of the pandemic. So you'll see here that there are lots of ways in which young people are being affected, whether it is missing milestone moments or like graduations or going off to school, or whether it is upheavals to daily routines, right? Um, some, of, some, some folks are not working and they're not in school either. And in fact, a majority of young adults in the United States are living with their parents for the first time since the Great Depression, according to the Pew Center. And nearly three in 10 young people are neither working nor in school. Um, many young folks are also talking about and reporting higher levels of discrimination. This is happening particularly in the Asian American community with Asian, um, with COVID uh, racism that is focused on Asian communities. And many people, 
whether it's young folks or older, are really experiencing rising levels of anxiety and depression. Um, there is a mental health crisis related to this pandemic. So we wanted to identify some of these to recognize that this moment this time is challenging and at the same time opens up opportunities for change because as you know the pandemic is also revealing the levels of systemic oppression and inequity that are in this country particularly as they affect black native asian latinx communities in this country so let's take a moment to put up another poll and we wanted to hear from you. Um, how have you been affected by the pandemic? Um, so we've got some options here that you can look at. And we'd love to know how um, the pandemic is affecting you in terms of your own life, your family, and the like. Okay, let's um, see where we are with responses on this. Okay, um, yeah, not surprising. 70% of you are saying that you're exhausted and drained. Um, I feel the same way. And um, that is not surprising given what is happening right now. Um, many of you are concerned about your health or your family's health, um, worried about jobs and education, um, and um, taking it day by day, many of you as well. Um, but it's not surprising that you know over 50% are worried about education and jobs, concerned about health, and of course, feeling exhausted and drained. So let's close this one out. And we're hoping that um, you of course, please go ahead and continue to, to answer or ask questions in the chat, engage in the, um, sorry, in the Q&A, please feel free to do that. Um, so moving on to the next generational moment we wanted to identify, um, anti-Black racism. And of course, I want to start off by saying this is not a generational issue. Right? Anti-Black racism has been here for generations. It is not a new issue, but it, just like the pandemic, it is revealing itself in really visible ways. And more people than ever are being awakened to and attuned to the effects of anti-Black racism. And what are those? Um, well, for Black people, what is happening right now is just a reflection of the ongoing realities of daily life in America that they have been enduring for many, many years, right? Um, and the, the police and vigilante violence in particular that we're seeing against Black people, um, whether it's Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, Bree Black, Mercy Mack, um, are all affecting um, Black communities across this country, leading to increased levels of trauma. And for those who are not Black, whether you're people of color or white folks, it's nearly impossible to ignore or dismiss or deny what is happening, right, in the country when it comes to systemic anti-Black racism. Um, more people are becoming aware of their privileges um, and, of course, aware of systems of oppression that continue to perpetuate anti-Black racism in this country. Many of us are feeling an urgency to act and want to engage in social movements for change, whether it is around the uprisings, whether it's having brave conversations, or whether it is just learning, um, like many of you are doing here with the Solidarity Semester. So um, let's put up another poll with the next slide. Um, and here we want to know um, how the current moment is affecting you. And so how are you taking and how have you taken action against anti-Black racism? We've got a number of um, options here um, between direct actions to donating um, to learning. So let's take a moment to see where folks are. Okay, let's go ahead and see what the responses are. All right, um, so it looks like um, over 80% of folks are doing some similar things, um, keeping up with the news, uh, which is not easy, right, um, to read about racial trauma, um, sharing information about anti-Black racism with friends and family, learning more, reading more perhaps about white supremacy and its effects, 
reflecting on our own internal biases. Um, so that's really great to see, right, that um, over 80% are engaging in these really important responses and actions. 47% um, of you are attending rallies and protests. 65% um, of you have donated to causes and organizations. That's, this is really great to see. And I think what this shows us, right, is that all of you are really engaging in some way. And some of you haven't done anything but want to. You feel the urgency to act. And so um, this really helps us get a sense of who you are, where you are in terms of your engagement, and how hopefully the solidarity semester can accentuate what you're doing. So thank you for all that you all are doing too in your communities and in your lives. So moving on, we wanted to, now that we have a sense, right, of the generational moments um, with the pandemic, systemic racism and anti-Black racism, we wanted to talk a little bit about social change and how it happens, why it happens, and then we'll move into talking about your roles um, in the social change ecosystem. So why does social change happen? I think you all know this, right? I mean, you're already engaged. Um, social change often happens because people feel that something is really unfair or unjust and they wanna change it. It also happens because people feel that there's a better future out there, that we deserve better lives, right? So there is some form of injustice that we get angry about, outraged about, and then we see the vision for what could be and we wanna move towards that vision. Some of us respond because we're personally affected. Um, for myself, um, I'm an immigrant who moved to this country when I was 12. And for me, seeing the experiences of um, discrimination and othering that my family felt as immigrants um, really engendered in me this interest in creating social change, right? So it depends on the person. For others, it's because we wanna uphold values that we believe in. Um, and because we believe that our lives are intertwined with everyone else's and that we can't really have liberation on our own or freedom on our own or justice on our own if other people anywhere in the world are enduring injustice. So these are some of the reasons why we're motivated to respond and create social change. On the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about how social change happens. And there are lots of different ways, lots of different strategies that folks engage in, right? Um, some of us actually get out on the streets and are protesting or engaging in direct actions. Um, others are uh, focused on dialogue and bridge building. Um, still others are looking at the electoral process and voting in order to create social change. Um, Others are organizing and mobilizing, and we're really seeing that around the country in terms of how grassroots communities are being organized, even in the time of social distancing, to respond to the crises that are um, all amongst us. And then lastly, advocacy and litigation. And one I wanted to um, really point out on the slide is this uh, one uh, example of Save California Ethnic Studies, which is actually a campaign that students and educators came together around to ensure that the California Ethnic Studies curriculum had representation of people of color, right? Um, and through advocacy, which is another strategy, they were able to actually win that campaign. So these are some of the ways in which social change can happen. But the first starting point, um, as you can see on the next slide, is actually that it starts with us. And I know that sounds like a cliche, but I really believe this, that social change actually does start with us. Um, there's this great quote by Nikki Giovanni, um, who uh, said, if you don't understand yourself, you don't understand anybody else, right? And so part of what we're gonna talk about next with the social change ecosystem map is that we have to start with ourselves and building out our self-awareness. And there are different ways that we can increase our self-awareness. I assume that all of you are self-aware in many ways, right? But we're all learning, um, we're all changing, and we're all growing. So some questions you can ask yourself are, what are my privileges, right? And how do they show up? Um, whether it is um, conscious or subconscious. Um, for me, I'm on a learning process to figure out how privileges that I carry, whether it's around colorism or caste or English language proficiency, how they show up and how they then um, decide how I relate to people or how I show up in spaces. So learning and unlearning our privileges is a form of self-awareness that can lead to social change. 
Also trying to figure out what you're good at. What are your skill sets that come to you naturally and what are your learning edges? That's a way to gain self-awareness. And then when you figure out what your learning edges are, thinking about whom you need to learn from, who are the visionaries and the guides in your ecosystem that you could learn from. And then really getting clear about who your people are. Who are the folks that you're accountable to? Who are the people that are gonna let you know when you're veering off course or when you're not being self-aware, right? Um, and then finally, really aligning with your values. What's worth fighting for? And what brings you joy and keeps you going? Because I firmly believe that social change work can actually be joyful and it can actually be fulfilling and rewarding. Yes, it can be draining and challenging at many times, but it can also be unbelievably joyful and rewarding. And that's what we hope that um, we can impart to you in terms of the examples that we're gonna talk about as well as some of the frameworks and tools. Um, so with that, I wanna actually um, talk about the first tool. And as um, we're going into this tool, I want to look, I wanted to really quickly look at the Q&A in terms of some of the things that folks are saying here. I appreciate you all joining in here. Um, yeah, so Samia says so many people are becoming aware of the deep systemic inequalities that exist in this country where they didn't know before. That's right. Um, and that's one of the ways in which um, Samia and others um, that we are responding, right, in terms of the generational moments that are happening here here. Absolutely. Um, there's also a question that Victor asks around social entrepreneurship. Is that one way of doing social change? Absolutely. Um, there are many pathways to social change and social entrepreneurship for those folks who are thinking about everything from creating micro businesses or um, cooperatives um, or um, urban farms. Um, these are all ways in which or examples of ways in which folks have engaged right in terms of using capital and where capital has often been used against people of color and indigenous folks, but using capital and transforming it to make the lives of people better. So thank you for those questions. Keep asking them, keep engaging with us with the Q&A and also on Twitter at solidarity underscore is. Um, we'd love to hear um, what you think of these conversation, uh, this conversation and also your responses to some of the questions. And hashtag solidarity semester. All right, so we wanna now talk a little bit about the tool that we wanted to introduce today. We, we told you that in every class, we're gonna introduce a tool or a framework that you can take with you and you can work with. And today's resource is this um, social change ecosystem map. Um, and just a little bit about this map, you may have seen it on Instagram or on social media, um, but I wanted to just say how it came about really quickly. Um, this map uh, was something that I created a number of years ago when I was going through a time of deep confusion in terms of my own role. And um, as someone who has worked in social change movements for over 15 years, not to date myself, um, I still find myself at times being confused, being overwhelmed. And it was at one of those moments that I um, thought about the different roles that I have played and that I've watched others play and um, really came up with this concept, right, of how we are all intertwined with each other. Um, and Shelby, who's part of our team, um, made this uh, concept come to life with this really beautiful rendition. And the way in which these circles are connected is that there are 10 roles um, that you can see on the social change ecosystem map, and they're all connected to each other. In the middle circle, are the values that folks hold dear to themselves. So we put in some like equity or solidarity or justice, but you could add to this, right? And what we want you to do is to take this map and to use it. And we'll talk to you in a little bit about a three-step process that you can use, um, but we, we want you to engage with this, to find yourself on this map, um, to think about the roles that you wanna stretch into, to think about the roles you already play and to identify that there's an ecosystem of folks around you. So with this framework, you could do three things. You can um, align yourself with your values in the middle circle. You can map out your roles and the ones you wanna play to, and you can recognize who else is part of your ecosystem, who can support you or you can learn from. So that's how we hope you'll use the social change ecosystem map, and then it'll lead you to hopefully change um, that you wanna take in your communities. So. Um, 
one of the questions we're going to be asking you a little bit later is actually what role do you play, right? Um, what role do you see yourself playing? So please take a look at the map and um, Catherine had dropped the resource link into the chat um, in case you want to pull it up and take a look at it as we go along. So we wanted to talk about a couple of roles on this map. We're not going to go through all of them, but we're going to do a few of them. So on the next slide, um, you will see um, that we are focusing on disruptors. Um, disruptors get a really bad rap sometimes um, because folks don't think disruption is a good thing. I have to think otherwise. And um, for me, disruptors are folks who, as you may have heard the late uh, Congressman John Lewis say, um, these are folks who get into good trouble. Right? It's always good to get into good trouble, I feel. Um, and disruptors do that. And so one example that we wanted to highlight is that of Naomi Osaka, who, as you know, won the US Open over the weekend. And you may have seen that every time she walked into every match at the US Open, she wore a face mask with the name of a black person who has been killed in police violence. And she's a disruptor because disruptors oftentimes take risks. They push us beyond the status quo. And they help us to build up our own awareness and to build our power. Um, oftentimes they act alone. Sometimes they act with a small group of people. But these are people who are taking these risky actions in order for the general public to pay attention. So if you know of disruptors, I'd love for you to put them in the Q&A or, or also to put it on Twitter um, in terms of disruptors that you're aware of in your lives. Another um, group of disruptors we wanted to lift up is Students Against Hindutva Ideology, which is a group of college students around the country who came together to actually talk about the impact of Hindu nationalism, um, not just in India, but also here in the United States. And in that way, they have been disruptors because they're forcing a lot of difficult conversations to happen in the Hindu community and in the Indian community in the US um, through the work that they're doing. All right, moving on to the next slide, we also want to ask about or talk about builders, right? So builders are folks who, um, many of us are builders, I'm, I'm also a builder, who are ready to implement, right? You're ready to take action. So you might be drawn to a vision that you really believe in, and you are the person who is ready with the spreadsheet, you've got the Excel document, you know who you're gonna call, you know how to line people up to build the vision, you know um, what it takes right, to organize a program or a project, and you're going to get it done. Builders are really great counterparts with visionaries and experimenters, because they really are building the scaffolding, if you want to think about it like that, right, um, for social change to happen. A lot of them build organizations or projects. And here are some examples really quickly that we wanted to highlight. Um, Books and Breakfast, which was a response to COVID uh, from a group called Freedom Inc., which organizes Southeast Asian and Black folks in Madison, Wisconsin, where they came together for this Books and Breakfast um, events, series of events that made sure that folks were getting nutrition and were reading at the same time. So building something in the middle of the pandemic, right, where many of us felt so hopeless uh, in order to reach their communities. Um, we also wanted to lift up the STAY project, which is a project that came together with Appalachian youth who are really interested in making sure that folks are building an environmentally sustainable Appalachia that's also economically just and the House of Tulip, um, which is actually restoring a property in New Orleans that's accessible um, for communities, especially trans communities, in terms of access to healthcare and employment. So all these are examples of organizations which have people behind them who are builders um, and who are actually making something happen in terms of being in service to a collective vision. Okay, um, I think we're going to do two more. So the next one is healers, and I see some questions coming in, so I'll try to get those, um, get to those in a minute. So healers um, are folks who are um, really focused on and attuned to uh, trauma, right? And they're thinking about healing that trauma, not at an individual level necessarily, but at a collective level. So these are folks who understand that um, Islamophobia, for example, has a generational impact, right? That it is affecting generations of young people, um, 
people who were maybe not even born or very young when 9-11 happened and the backlash happened, but that the impact of Islamophobia continues generation after generation. And these are the folks who are thinking about what does it mean to heal those traumas and that kind of pain. And we wanted to uplift um, the NAP ministry, uh, which is a project that all of us at the Solidarity Semester really love. Although I will say, I don't subscribe to doing what they um, tell us to do, which is to take more naps and to get more rest, right? Because, um, the, because racial trauma has an impact on us. And it's really important to think about, as they say, rest as a form of resistance and reparations. So follow them on Twitter, and hopefully you will do better following their advice than I do. Um, and then lastly, we wanted to highlight um, frontline responders. So as you can imagine, these are the folks that are on the scene. When there's a community crisis, they are either there, right, at the scene, um, they're able to put together the first rapid response call. They are the ones who have all of the phone numbers of community leaders on their phone and they're ready to start the text chain. They know how to marshal resources that are needed. They know who to call, they know who to mobilize. Um, frontline responders need a lot of caregivers around them because oftentimes they don't know when they're being stretched too far. And so it's really important to think of the ecosystem map as something that's um, complementary to each other, right? Every single one of us needs someone else on that map actually. Um, so some examples of frontline responders and please put more questions or ideas into the Q&A as well or share them on Twitter with us. Um, we wanted to uplift um, Ujma Medics, which is um, a group in Chicago that teaches first response for folks who are facing physical harm um, especially black communities that are facing physical harm. Um, the Justice for Muslims Collective, which has a mutual aid or community relief fund, again, in response to the pandemic that organized, and for the Girls Medical Fund, which raises money to assist with black trans folks, especially to meet expenses related to rent or health care and health access. So these are examples of frontline responders all around the country as well. So I wanted to take a look at, um, we'll go to the next slide and pull the map up again, but I wanted to take a look really qu quickly at the Q&A um, to see what you all are talking about. And, and one of the things I already see on here, which is great, is you're coming up with folks who are playing these roles in your lives or in your communities, which is wonderful, because it's so important to uplift folks um, who are already doing this. And um, that that you are also coming up with um, a question around, can you play three roles? Yes, you can absolutely play more than one role. And it's really important to understand that oftentimes in different contexts, we play different roles, right? Uh, so in, in one issue, say with the pandemic, you might see yourself as a caregiver. But when it comes to addressing anti-Black racism, you might see yourself as a frontline responder. So we often take on different roles as well. Um, and you can see here on the map that there are, again, a lot of roles that we didn't cover today, which we're going to try to cover throughout the course of the semester. Um, but we really encourage you to engage with this map. So on the next slide, we want to um, give you three steps, because it's actually pretty simple in terms of how to engage with the map and the framework. I really encourage you to work with the reflection guide. Someone asked where to find this information and maybe Catherine, you can put that up into the Q&A again or answer the question. Um, this information, the map and the reflection guide are all on the Building Movement Projects website. Catherine just put the link in. Um, you will find there the map, you'll find the descriptions of all the roles and you will find a reflection guide, a pretty lengthy reflection guide where you can ask yourself a lot of questions to build your self-awareness. Um, it's a three-step process, super simple. One, identify the cause that you care about. Identify what your values are and then map out your roles. Two, take a step back, reflect. What is the narrative that is emerging about you? What story are you seeing as you look at your map? What stories emerging about your ecosystem? And then three, plan. Set a couple of goals, identify some learning questions for yourself, and think about how you're gonna hold yourself accountable. Are you gonna return in three months? Who is going to help you in terms of holding you accountable, right? So these are all the things that you can do. Identify or map, reflect and learn, 
and plan. Um, these three steps are um, kind of, you know, uh, we, we talk about that we talk about them in length in the reflection guide, so you can get a lot more from there, but this is kind of the short version of what you, what you can do with this tool. All right, so um, let's go on to some questions and reflections, and we're gonna be asking you um, really soon to map yourself out if you haven't done it already. Um, let me see if I can pull out a couple of questions here before I bring Anna in uh, to show you what it looks like when you actually map yourself out. So um, one question that often comes up is whether or not job titles um, are the same as roles. And I want to just, um, just I want to emphasize that a job title is not a role, right? So you might be a community organizer, but that's not a role on the map, right? Or you might be um, a uh, somebody who um, is an online digital manager, but you're not going to see that on the map. And so we want to really encourage you not to put jobs in the map, we want to think about how you play roles. So if you're a digital organizer, you might be a storyteller, right? Um, if you're a community organizer, you might be a weaver, bringing different folks together. So really think about how the roles are what you want to focus on rather than job titles, because regardless of job titles, people can play different types of roles, right? Um, I often say that it's not just the executive director or the head of an organization that is a visionary. There can be other people that can also play visionary roles, even if they don't have that title, right? Um, let me see if I can pull out one more question. Do you have tips on how to grapple with feelings? Serena asks that certain roles are more important or more critical. I was feeling guilty that I wasn't filling the frontline responder role during the pro protest, but I don't think that's my role. Yes, so Serena, that is such a great um, observation that you're making because this map is um, really a way for us to understand that every single one of us plays different roles. We don't have to play the same roles. In fact, if we do, we're not really advancing social change, right? And so many of us can't be frontline responders for various reasons, perhaps because of the pandemic, right? Because we are not, for health reasons, able to go out on the streets. Um, or we have care people that we care for at home and we can't really expose ourselves, right? There are a lot, or, or we just can't go. We just can't go. And that is okay because there are other roles that you can play. So the map is also um, something that you can go to because it doesn't give you a hierarchy. We're equal on the map, right? And so um, that's really important to remember. So a storyteller during the pandemic is just as important as a frontline responder, but they might require different responses from the ecosystem around them too. So some roles are on the headlines, other roles might not be, but that doesn't mean that they're not equally important. So um, why don't we actually bring Anna in um, because I wanna show you what it looks like when you map yourself out. And Anna, I think we'll also try to maybe answer some of these other questions, right? In terms of uh, the ones that are coming up um, in the Q&A. So, um, I'm going to have Anna really quickly introduce herself and pull up her own map, which we had her do. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the observations that she came up with. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Castro. My pronouns are she, hers. Um, and when I'm not doing um, amazing solidarity is project work, I am the senior communications manager at Transgender Law Center. Um, I am sharing my map right now um, on this screen, but to let you know also um, that I definitely think of myself most uh, these days as a guide. Um, mm -hmm. So Deepa, you tell me when you want to start. <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Anna. That's wonderful. And I also see that you put your name down and this is what Anna did. So Anna has in the middle of the map put down um, identified values, right? Um, so along with the ones that we had, Anna put down freedom, community and trust. Um, and then Anna also identified the cause that she's focused on while she mapped herself out, which is growing within the movement for dignity and respect for all. So we want to recommend that you start there with your values and your cause. And then Anna put her um, name down um, in several circles. And Anna, when you look at this map, right, and you take a step back, what is it revealing to you? What kind of stories emerging about yourself when you look at this? And what are you thinking about in terms of questions that you have? 
Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I have used this tool to map out my role at various parts of the last year. Um, but when I did this map in particular, it was just thinking about the place that many of y'all might find yourselves in, um, either working or uh, in school right now in undergrad, um, and really thinking. I was kind. I was a Black Studies major, um, definitely focused on like U.S. Um, and politics post Reconstruction. And when I graduated, I was like, "What am I? You know, what do I, What do I want to do in the world?" Um, I'd been a student organizer, and so I applied to work within a nonprofit. Um, and so with this map that I have right here, um, I thought these were the questions that came to, my, to mind. It was, right. what, what do I want to be? What role do I want to take? And also, what is the moment calling me to be? Um, because I think, as you mentioned before, Deepa, there are a lot of roles in here that are, I think a lot of people have uh, a lot of values placed around it. Like the idea of being a visionary um, right. and the idea of being a vanguard frontline responder um, is like to an extent um, an amazing role, but also is glamorized in a way in terms of like the celebrity activist. Um, and so I was thinking, I was like, I am friends with many of the folks that are your visionaries, your frontline responders. Um, and like you said, complimentary, I am a builder um, because I like to make sure that we get bottom line the thing done. Um, and so, you know, I was thinking about like when I first started, I really was looking for a guide. Um, I, you know, I think that there's a lot of, someone else used this term in another solidarity school that we did, um, adultism or ageism. Mm -hmm. um, this idea that like, I need to look for people that are older than me to tell me like, what is it that we need to do next? I'm looking around for someone that has the answers. Um, and I really like kind of realized at some point, I was like, that's kind of disregarding the lived experience that I have that a lot of us have. Um, that isn't necessarily, you know, we are assigning roles and names to this, but a lot of us have played the part for our entire life. Mm -hmm. um, so now I feel like I want to act as a guide and pass the torch and pass the mic to someone else. Um, I'm not so young and, and cute anymore. I'm like in my 30s. Um, but I'm like thinking about, you know, like I don't want to be doing this work my whole life. I definitely want to make sure that our next generation of organizers have the value of um, being given these amazing tools, but also the confidence to be like, y'all have the answers, go with them. That's great. And I can attest to the fact that you are a guide in many ways, um, including for people older than you, like me. Um, another question that I had for you, Anna, is tell us a little bit about the ecosystem, right? Um, wh why is it important not to just map yourself? Right, and that's, that's of course what we did here. But what happens when you start to identify other people and um, how does that help you build your skills and also um, stretch into different roles as well? Awesome, yeah, well, thank you so much, Shiba. I think, you know, the first question that you kind of pointed out for folks about knowing yourself was a really important one. And then the next one, knowing others. Um, within myself, I'm like, hey, I might have certain tendencies for what I know that I'm good at, but when I mapped out my social ecosystem, I was like, hey, we might be missing a few things. Um, and some of those things I might, some of those roles I might be interested in playing. Um, for example, I am a communication strategist by trade. That is what I've been doing within the movement. I worked with ver many uh, various organizations um, crafting narrative strategy, uh, campaign communications, etc. Um, I'm a good storyteller, but I'm not interested in telling my own story. Mm -hmm. um, I am definitely interested in making sure that the folks that are closest to the harm, most impacted, are the ones that have the platform to provide the solutions that they have. I work at Transgender Law Center. We have the Trans Agenda for Liberation. Knowing myself and knowing my privileges, knowing my biases, knowing everything about like what my lived experience has been, um, makes me a better uh, makes me better able to act in solidarity with others and identify what roles are needed to mm -hmm. accomplish the visionary work that other folks have, in particular Black trans folks. That's great. That's super helpful. And again. 
bringing in um, the point that this ecosystem is not just about you uh, or me, it is about all of us, right? And that the ecosystem can change depending on whatever issue it is that you're working on, whatever cause or campaign that you're focused on. Um, so I just wanna reiterate, and Anna said this at the start, that Anna's used this map many different times. And so really wanna um, encourage you to do that, right? Anytime you feel lost, anytime you wanna do a reset or a realignment, this map can help you realign with your values. It can help you understand your skills. And of course it can help you get in touch with your ecosystem. Um, I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Anna, uh, to take us to the next slide where we're actually gonna ask folks to tell us about your social change role. Yes, so um, I have been off tweeting um, in the Twitter sphere. Um, so join me there and I've asked folks, you know, what role do you identify as? So right now we have this poll just to see, you know, what do you identify as now? Um, because it'll be fun to see that if over the course of the next five weeks, you all of a sudden think like, hey, there's something that I want to stretch into. Um, there's something that my community is calling me to, to um, actually like grow into. Um, and, and again, in a year, where are we gonna be? What skills are we gonna need? What visionaries, what builders, what caregivers, what disruptors um, are gonna be necessary? So um, I see a lot of you responding right now. Um, and I'm very excited to see, look, you know, we've got a lot of folks um, right now that are identifying as builders. Um, we have, you know, a, almost across the board, there are folks that are identifying as things. There are folks that are not identifying as frontline responders, um, which I think, you know, this right. is actually like a very um, good play. You know, this is going to be a role that we talk most about um, because it actually defines, you know, this particular moment that we're in. As Deepa mentioned, so many people took action this year. So many people protested um globally in response to white supremacy and anti-black racism um so all of us that don't identify as frontline responders are definitely the backup the support to a folks that are right now acting that's such a great point to yeah. that are yes that are right now our frontline responders yeah it's great to see um builders visionaries guides caregivers that's great uh, we need everybody. I think actually everyone is uh, is sort of is, is, is here, right? Um, so it's great to see that all of you are building, or we already have a community and an ecosystem here um, of folks who are doing these social change roles in different ways. So um, no guilt, no shame, right? Um, it's just about, again, alignment, getting clear on values, strengthening our skill sets, finding the people. So um, we're going to now uh, turn it over, I think, to um, learn a little bit more about your social change roles. So I'm going to turn it on to Shelby. Hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, please reach out to us on Twitter using the hashtag Solidarity Semester. Um, because we want to hear your voices and hear about your work and your roles and your passions. Um, as Deepa has said, like you are already a part of this ecosystem and this network, and it is weird to be in this webinar style where we can't see you and talk to you, but we do want to. So please jump on and let us know what roles you play and what roles you want to stretch into. Um, I am a, a part-time fellow at the Building Movement Project, and I've been working with Deepa for almost three years now. Um, and in that role, I definitely see myself as a builder and a storyteller, but as Anna said, like, I'm not interested in telling my own story. Um, I'm interested in, in kind of facilitating and, and supporting in that way. Um, I'm also a grad student at the University of Washington here uh, studying South Asian studies. And my work is focused on Pakistan and climate crisis um, and how people are adapting to this kind of really new normal intense heat um, that's coming up. I mean, right now I'm trapped in my apartment because there's wildfires ravaging the Western United States and I can't go outside. So I find myself wanting to stretch into being a disruptor in, in kind of this very white and, and colonial space here at the university. Um, but I wanna know, I'm gonna be here on Twitter, can't leave my house, so please um, jump on and let, let us know what you're up to and what your roles are. And I'm gonna pass it over to Deborah, who can tell you more about how you can kind of grow in your role too um, through the Power Up Internship Program. Thank you, Shelby. 
Um, hi, everyone. My name is Deborah McCary, um, and I'm part of the Solidarity Semester team. Um, my current social change role, I think, um, would be that of a builder. Um, I'm in a position where I can help develop and gather resources to support and serve um, particularly the Muslim, Arab, and South Asian uh, communities in my position with the Rise Together Fund. Um, and I wanted to quickly announce our Power Up Internship Program um, that we have accompanying the Solidarity Semester. Um, so this program is designed to connect interns with racial justice organizations. Um, and for those of you who are between 18 and 25 years old, currently pursuing an associate's or bachelor's degree um, and partaking in each of these solidarity semester sessions, whether that be live or through the recordings, uh, we encourage you to apply using this link um, on the slide here and submit your resume to the Solidarity Is email address by the deadline of October 4th. Um, all of this information will be included in our follow-up emails and the slide deck, which you will have access to. Um, and in the application, there will be space for you to showcase what you've learned in these sessions. So we look forward to having you join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the next month. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Deborah, and um, I'm so excited that you all got to meet our team um, because this is a group of people who, who do play different roles in our ecosystem at the Solidarity Semester and have done just a magnificent job of making this program come to life. And I'm so, um, I'm just honored to be able to work with all of them. Um, so please, of course, apply for our internship program. We're looking forward to getting your applications. Um, the information is here and it will also be sent out as well to anyone who's registered. So we're at the close. We have only about eight minutes left and we're very, um, we're very focused on always ending and starting on time, as you'll see, because I know you all are busy. So on the next slide, we wanted to leave you with what to do next. Right? We want to always give you um, some action items, which we'll do in a minute, but also remind you of what to do next. So one of the first pieces of homework is to complete your social change ecosystem map and share it. Um, it's actually fun to do. I promise it will be fun to do if you haven't done it before. And um, so you, you, you have the link. Um, please complete it. You can take a picture of it and you can put your name if you'd like and tweet it out or put it on Instagram. If you put it on Instagram, you can tag me. Um, Deepa V. Iyer and also at Building Movement Project and of course hashtag it as Solidarity Semester. We want to see who is in our ecosystem here. Secondly, we want you to check out the Solidarity Syllabus. Um, this syllabus is completely full of resources, readings, and other information if you want to go deeper into understanding social change roles. It will be part of what we send to you at the end of the week. So registering for this, um, uh, registering for the semester is really important because it's a way for you to keep abreast of what it is that we're offering. And if you happen to miss a session because you've registered, you'll still have access to our recordings and all of the information that we provide. Um, thirdly, apply for the Power Up Internship Program if you can. Um, and uh, we really encourage you to do that and to also spread the word about the Solidarity Semester to your friends. Tell two people in your network to join us in this ecosystem. Again, if you miss a session or they miss a session, they'll still have access to the recordings and the information. Um, and of course, we hope to see you on our Instagram Live on Thursday, um, this Thursday from 6 to 7 Easter. So on the next slide, um, we want to identify a couple of action items beyond um, what we just talked about that you can be doing. Um, I know that there are a bunch of questions that are coming up about the internship program. So um, we'll try to get to those. Deborah will try to answer those. If you don't get your question answered here live, um, please go ahead and um, email us. Um, and Catherine will put the Solidarity Is email address into the chat. Um, so that you are able to ask us those questions and we will get back to you. But we'll try to answer as much as we can. Registration is still open for this seminar. Yes, um, it absolutely is. Thank you, Yakira, for asking. Um, and we, we really want you to tell people to register for it. Again, five weeks online, free. Two action items. Um, 
this is from the Sunrise Movement. Um, this is uh, Sunrise Movement is a youth led um, organization that is creating a social movement when it comes to um, addressing the uh, environment and taking action for climate change and environmental disasters and the like. Um, we want to encourage you to join their call that is happening on the 17th right after our Instagram live. You can head to this at 8.30 p.m. Um, the link is at the bottom if you're interested. Really looking at at the air quality, as Shelby said, particularly on the West Coast, what you can do about it. So we want to give you this one action item. And a second one we want to give you is um, on the next slide. And this is one about changing and being more inclusive when it comes to our narratives. Um, so this is a campaign hashtag diversify our narrative where you can demand for anti-racist tax to be used in high schools right now. Um, we said earlier that more people are awakened in this moment, right? And you all are here, but there are so many folks, your peers, um, who need to also be here or need to be reading and learning. So we want to um, tell you about this particular campaign, which is really focused on making sure the school systems are including literature and um, nonfiction to educate American youth on the systemic injustices that exist in our society. Um, so you can check out diversity, our, diversifyournarrative.com, hashtag diversifyournarrative. Take a look at your school, right? Um, that's one of, if you're in school or if you're in college and joining us, or even if, if you're a part of an internship program at an organization or working in an organization, take a look at how you are building knowledge, right? Are there um, uh, book clubs you can start? Are there lunch groups you can have? Are there Zoom um, conversations you can have where folks are actually looking at and reading and educating themselves about the anti-racist tax um, that exist in this country right now. All right. So um, with that, I'm going to see if I can answer a couple of questions really quickly. We can go to the next slide as we do that. Um, and let us see here. Um, there are a lot of questions on the internship program. So um, we're going to try to answer those, right, Deborah? I think we are answering as many as we can. Um, we're focusing on um, folks who are um, in the age range that we said, because we're really hoping to provide a pathway for young folks to enter the nonprofit sector and to um, have the opportunity to learn about social change issues at the same time. Um, we hope that others will also um, find different pathways and we'll be sure to let you know of them throughout the seminar as well. So I'm hoping that um, our team can answer as many questions as we can. And if not, email us. Um, and I think that the information has been sent over solidarityiscampaign at gmail.com and we'll be sure to get to your uh, questions. So um, with that, three minutes left, quick synthesis. We talked today about the generational moments that folks are facing, especially young folks. The pandemic, anti-Black racism, um, and so many more, right, that we didn't get to talk about. We talked about the effects and consequences of those on our lives, our families, our communities. And we talked about how social change can come about even in times of crisis, how it happens, why it happens, the strategies for it to happen. And we landed on and really looked at building our own self-awareness through the social change ecosystem map, which introduced us to 10 roles that we can play in an interconnected ecosystem in order to create social change. And we left you with a couple of action steps, um, including the internship program, but also two others that you can take part in right away in order to flex your social change role and add to um, the movements that are taking place all around us. So with that, um, we really hope that we'll see you on Twitter um, with your social change map. We hope that we'll see you in our email accounts. And we really want to see you on Thursday night um, from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific, where we will be in conversation with someone that I look at as a guide and a visionary, um, Grace Martinez Rojas, who is the executive director of the very powerful organization, youth-led organization, United We Dream, We'll be in conversation with Grace to talk about her own trajectory and also all the tips that she has for young folks who are entering social movements. So join us. Um, it is going to be on Instagram Live at Building Movement Project. 
Um, on the next slide, um, we then want to see you next Tuesday for session two um, of the Solidarity Semester. And I won't talk too much about it, but I'll leave you with this quote by someone that I think of as a mentor and visionary, um, Grace Lee Boggs, an Asian American activist from Detroit. And Grace Lee Boggs said, um, in this exquisitely connected world, it is never a question of critical mass. It is always about critical connections. And that is the underlying element of solidarity practice, relationship building and connections. And that is what we will be talking about over the next couple of sessions of the solidarity semester. So we look forward to seeing you this Thursday evening on Instagram Live, next Tuesday here at the same place, the Zoom link, and in between on Twitter, on email, and wishing you all the best over the next week. Um, and looking forward to being in community with you all. So thank you to our team. Thank you to all of you for joining us and we'll see you on Thursday.